Good morning, everyone. It is 4 a.m. right now. We're here in Florida. All the bait shops are closed. So today we're gonna have to find some of our own bait. Let's get going. So look at our bait right here. Shrimp bait? This is shrimp bait. This is what you've been chucking? This is what I've been chucking. Now let me show you how to throw a cast net really quick. It's very simple, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. Here is your opportunity to learn. It's very, very simple. All right, put the loop end in your hand. And we're just gonna wrap it up like this so that we get loops like this. Pick this part up, bring it to the top. Then grab it by the neck, one third the way down. And use this hand with all the loops on it. Grab the net. Now we take one section up, grab it with your thumb. Take another section up, grab it with your thumb. Take a last section up, grab it with your thumb. Now whatever's left over here, we're gonna take about a third of whatever weight is left. Open. And when we throw it, we spin it so that it opens and falls like a pancake. Look at that. What's your head like? Whoa! That was a bad throw too. Wow. Ooh, I got a bite. Do you hear that? Gotta let it eat it. Nothing. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Nice keeper. 
Yeah. And this is with a sure catch. I call it the sure catch because you're sure to catch something on it. It doesn't matter what. Everything's gonna hit this rig. Look at that. That's a keeper size. That's definitely keeper size. in one throw. That's a bad throw. I never leave home without this. My waterproof bait box and all my rigs. Check it out. Oh, this is what I'm going to be using right here. This is the sure catch rig. And on the back, I show exactly how to use it. There's many ways. Today I'm gonna to be using it this way, with the Carolina rig. Someone's yelling they have enough for shrimp pasta. Fish head. This is the sure catch rig. Because you're sure to catch a bunch of fish. Um, what the heck is this? This is something big. Swimming to the left. I guess this is a ray, maybe? Feels like a ray. Whoa. No, it's not. What is it? It's an enormous black drum. Holy crap. Here's your net. A huge black drum. It didn't even move. Wow. Holy cow. This is my biggest black drum ever. There we go. My buddy even that. Oh my gosh. This one didn't even fight. Holy cow. This thing is freaking massive, y'all. Well, we're gonna have to try and eat this. That's the that's first black drum of one night? Yeah, my first one ever. <laughs> Thank you for the, for the hey, hat. Tell your mom to make soup with the hat. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Bait? Yeah, we definitely have enough for bait. We think we I'm going to try and catch to eat too. We definitely have enough to eat something, at least just for two people. Holy cow, we got a lot of shrimp. Yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. See, this is the best bait. That, I'm going to catch some trout with this. Maybe I should put that out now. What do you think? Should we, should we just start packing up and go back? I was we'll gonna go ask you what, what what should we do? So the sun's about to come up. The shrimping has completely stopped. I, ha I haven't been able to catch any of them in the past like 10 throws. So what we're gonna do now is just pack up. We got enough fish. Um, what do you okay, so now we're gonna take all this bait that we caught, put all of this other shrimping stuff away back in the truck. 
walk back, walk back out here and use these baits that we caught, the croakers, the ladyfish, the, uh, the pilchards, and the shrimps as more bait. We already have two fish, but I'm trying to catch some more fish to give away to other people, to eat when my family comes. Um, it's always just good to have fish in the freezer. And honestly, I haven't bought red meat for like a month now. I just keep eating shrimp and I keep eating fish and it's great and it's good for you too. This is the best bait right here. The croakers. You hook them right here. There we go. We've got this on the sure catch rig still. With the float on. And this float is actually a special float because it makes sound when you pop it. Listen, you hear that clacking sound? Did you hear that? It's a, it's a weak fish. No, it's a tiny little speckled trout, never mind. Okay, let me show you this rig real quick. So with this cork, you can hear all this sound, right? That kind of clacking sound attracts the fish in. And this shrimp is free to just swim around nice and easy. basically cast it as far as I can out there and let it sit then I slowly pop it back and when I pop it back it makes that clackering sound that sound is like a dinner bell it attracts fish in and they'll see the shrimp easy target that's why when you see the fish about to attack it the shrimp just starts jumping all over the place Ooh. oh good god Every time I don't pay attention, I miss a fish. <laughs> now when we hook the shrimp, we'll hook it right here. getting bites out there. hardly has any speckles even. Yeah. Too small, but hooked it perfectly. Yay! 
hear shrimp are jumping out. Thanks for the heads up, babe. Yeah, look at that guy. Woo, got him good. Oh yeah, that's a keeper for sure. Yeah, there we go. It's a good one. We'll get another one. So this is a big mistake where the hook gets hooked back into itself and that's why you're missing fish. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that the hook is exposed. Yeah, that is a big reason why people are missing fish. And then hooking it. Guess you don't need a new camera girl after all. Oops. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a good one right here. Probably keeper. There we go. Not bad. I think it's a little small. I got plenty of fish. Let that guy go. Oh yeah. I think they're starting to bite now. Now I'm starting to get them every cast. This croaker has worked well. The cut bait worked well. Seems like the shrimps are the where it's at now. Mostly because I'm out of everything else. <laughs> I'm out of every other bait. Another small trout. A lot of these size trout today. Yeah, that one. That one's keeper. You want to measure it? Yeah. Here. Yep, 16, 17. Ooh, jumping all over the place. It's a redfish. Mm. Small little redfish. What we call a rat red. Rat red. Too small. All right, well, we didn't catch much this morning, so let's head back. At least we got a couple of fish this morning, like early, early this morning. Let's cook those up. Great, we got a lot of fish. 
Look at this drum that needs to be here. Look at that. Wow. Wow. I'm not even done. Wow. Oh, wow. She says, I don't know, what is that? I'm intimidated. <laughs> she didn't know. Wow. First of all, let's get a measurement on him. But this is probably 25 pound black drum. I've heard mixed reviews about the meat. We'll find out. We're gonna find out. All right, I'm getting a measurement on this. 33 inch. Nasty looking me too. Look at this. Jiggly, his. I saw. What the heck? Do you see that? I do. That is not looking right. Yeah, you can see all the water just leaking out. That's crazy. All right, look Something at these fillets. This is weird. I've never seen uh, it so gelatinous like that. I'm not sure that my black, something's not wrong with my black drum. It's a possibility that something is wrong with my black drum because it is very gelatinous. Okay. Is there something wrong with this, guys? I feel like I should not eat this. Okay, so that black drum, guys, I'm not gonna eat that. Something was very wrong with that meat. It looked like jello. I mean, you saw it. Yep. Comment below, has anybody ever seen anything like that before? Is there any kind of explanation? I mean, it might be safe to eat, but... We texted a couple of our friends and they confirmed that black drum does not usually no. look like that, so... So we are not gonna use, we're not gonna eat that meat, but we have I already filleted out a the, one of the trouts, and we're gonna turn it into um, panko fried. We're gonna have it on top of a bed of Japanese a bed of rice with some Japanese curry on top, and I'm gonna be turning some of these shrimps that we caught. I mean, look at the size of them. These are pretty good eating size ones. We're gonna turn these into tempura or panko fried and then we'll put them in the sushi rolls.
I think it's this way. Don't knock it till you try it, y'all. This is fried chili oil. It's so yummy. All right, let's dig in. Oh, this one's yours. Ooh, thank you. All right, try one. I have two. This is tempura shrimp. What else? Avocado. Yes, the panko shrimp, avocado, and cucumber. Mm. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going in for the curry here. Here's the panko trout. Mmm. Wow. Let's hold it with some curry. The curry has potatoes, peas and carrots, and onions. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, those vegan rolls. My well, special vegan. So this has that fried tofu. It's got fried sweet potato avocado, uh, fried shallots, and then on top it's got the uh, chili crisp oil. Mm. Looks delicious. It's really yummy. You know how to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>